I'm started a new project. I'm building a shed or enclosure for my backup generator. I'm going to focus on two separate things and there'll be a separate video for each project. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to convert your generator like this that has a manual choke to an electric choke. And the reason you'd want to do that is, in my case, I want to be able to start and run the generator without actually coming out and manually starting it outside. I'm going to have a control panel in the garage to start the generator. That way it can stay completely encased in here. But the one problem with that is, before you can start a generator, you have to choke it. So I'll be tapping in to, obviously, the circuits for the key start, since I'll be making a remote panel, that'll basically be just like turning it on and starting it. And I also need to come up with some way to actually pull the choke and then push it off. I thought of a couple different ways to do it, and the best thing I could come up with was to use a power door lock actuator. So as you can see, this is the choke, and here's probably looks similar. This is a Duromax 10 kilowatt generator. But when the generator needs choked, you have to pull this lever out, and then as soon as it starts, you can basically push it back in to keep it running. I used a generic power door lock actuator, and you can get like a set of these, a set of two of these for like $10 on Amazon. And it's just got leads here, so when you apply power one direction, it goes this way. When you reverse the polarity, it goes back the other way. So from inside, I hit one button, it will turn the choke on. When I hit another button, it will put the choke off. And how you wire this is just like you'd wire the locks on a car. And it requires the use of two relays. And I'll go ahead and put a diagram on the screen. And you can feel free to pause it of how you would wire this. And the one 12 volt input is from one switch, which we'll call choke on. And the other 12 volt input will be from another switch, which we'll call choke off. And this circuit just uses the starting battery for the generator that's mounted on here. So out here, right outside the door to the house in the garage, I made this little control panel out of a cheap project box and some switches. And this is basically my run and off switch. And I'll go ahead and put up another diagram of how my generator is wired. But the off switch, it's actually like an on switch when it's off. And it completes two separate circuits to ground out different functions on the motor which shuts it down and so you'll need a single throw double pole switch to make that work if your generator is like mine and then when you flip it on to run you're basically breaking the contact on those two circuits and actually kind of turning off the circuit which will allow it to run. I have this green button wired directly to the two starter wires that would be behind the key switch so once you put it in the run position you can activate that button to activate the starter motor this will be my choke on button and choke off button I used a uh, eight conductor wire it's like a telephone type wire here for all of these controls and for the start circuit, which is a little higher amperage, it's still just activating a solenoid, but I used a little bit of a larger 16-gauge uh, wire here. And all this runs up and out to the generator. So the wiring comes out of the back of the house, into the generator enclosure, comes down. Here's the multi-conductor wire, like I said. Here's the heavier gauge wire for the starter circuit. So now what I need to do is take this front panel off and I can go ahead and start making those connections behind that panel.
So I'm going to drill a hole that goes into the side of the box here in the back. But it looks clean. making my last connections on the back of the ignition switch for the remote ignition for to get the starter wire connected what I'm doing is I'm hooking up some wires in here and I'm running them through here and I'm terminating them with spade terminals that way if I do need to disconnect the generator and move it away out of the enclosure I can do that it won't take too long All right, so I've got all of my wiring connections for the ignition switch done. I do not have the choke hooked up yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it. So the ignition switch needs to always just be left in the on position out here. I'm gonna go ahead and manually make sure the choke's pulled. All right, so I'll go over to my panel, flip it to run, press start button. And there we go. Shut it down, I'll just flip it off. So that works great. Now I just need to wire up the choke circuit. Now if you were just gonna run this strictly on natural gas, you don't need the choke. So you'd be done right now. You can go ahead and just hook up your gas and you're ready to roll. But in my case, since I'm using gasoline and I'll go ahead and let you guys know the reason I'm using gasoline is because out where I live there's no natural gas and I don't have any other propane appliances so my house is all electric I use a heat pump that has a backup heater but what we really use for heat is wood in the winter so it wasn't worth getting a propane tank installed because it would have been all my cost to do it. No one will come out and put one in just to run a generator. They want you to have like a major appliance that runs off of it, whether it be a, you know, a hot water tank or a furnace or whatnot. So I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just stick the gasoline. But I am thinking about getting the um, adapter kit that will allow us to run on propane just as an alternate fuel source, just in case. Uh, just in case there's gasoline that's short. I always have some 20 pound propane cylinders on hand, so that can be, that's a really easy conversion. These generators now come with the ability to run with propane, but mine is a few years old before they were offered with that function. So I'm going to go ahead and wire up the circuit for the choke. Right, so like I mentioned earlier, I'll show you that diagram one more time. We're going to need two automotive style relays. And you need to pull a positive and negative from the battery. And then we're going to wire that into our wires that I got coming from the two buttons on the panel. And I made a little cheat sheet here for my choke circuit. So my orange and orange white wire, brown and brown white wire, the ones I'm going to use coming from the panel. this panel so I have access to the wiring that I need. Right, so I'm going to need positive and negative 12 volts. And negative 12 volts can be taken anywhere on the frame. The solenoid connection right here is going to be my positive connection. Yep. I'm going to put a 3 amp fuse into this circuit. It should be enough. If not, I'll change out the fuse, but definitely want to have it fused. It's a direct connection to the battery. And if something goes wrong in your circuit or your relays, it'll blow the fuse instead of shorten out your wiring. It's so basically, it's pretty simple. You just follow the diagram that I posted on here. 
and you apply power and ground and hook these together and then you have your outputs here from your switches and then the input from the 12 volts. We'll see how it works when we get this all wired up. All right, well, I've got all the wiring done for the choke circuit. So when you press the top button, it turns the choke on, pulls the lever out, and you press the bottom button, pushes the lever in. All right, so got everything all wired up, and the only thing left to do is just hook up the power wire, but for the purposes of this video, that pretty much wraps it up. Show you how to you can put an automatic or electric choke on your manual choke generator. Next thing is just to try it out from inside. You hit, hit it to run, put the choke on, hit the start button. Anyway. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have a comment or a question, leave it below. Like and subscribe. Thanks.